writing code in a centralized location where others can view it and edit it without having to install anything locally. How can we do it? Let's check it out. How's it going everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what we're gonna talk about is something called AWS Cloud9. Now AWS Cloud9 is a cloud IDE that you can use to write, edit, save all of your code without having to install anything locally. So you don't have to install Visual Studio or any type of IDE and then worry about porting those settings over to another machine if your current machine breaks or for example, let's say you're testing that code with multiple people and you don't have to worry about them having to install all the extensions that you have and all of the different settings that you have in your Visual Studio or any other text editor or IDE environment. So let's jump right into the demo and check out how we can utilize AWS Cloud9. I'm at my AWS console here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Cloud9. And as we can see, it's a cloud ID for writing, running, and debugging code. So let's go ahead and click on Cloud9, and right off the bat, we're gonna have to create a brand new environment. So let's go ahead and create environment, and we're gonna name this Go ENV, and then we'll give it a description. Go environment. Now we can click next step here. And then what we can do is we can specify what type of environment we want to be able to run. So we have a few options. One is to create a new EC2 instance for environment that's direct access. We can create a new no ingress EC2 instance for our environment and we access it via the system manager. Or we can create and run on a remote server via SSH. So we can actually just configure this and just set up an SSH session if we wanted to for our environment. We'll just go ahead and we'll create a new EC2 instance. That's perfectly fine. And then we'll choose the instance type. So depending on how you know large, I guess, the code is, depending on how fast you need it to be, you're going to definitely want to choose different instance types. But for me, for development environment, I'm just going to go with the T2 Micro. It's easy. It's small. It's cheap. Actually, it's in the free tier eligible. So it's great for, you know, if you're brand new to AWS, you don't have to worry about paying anything. And then you can think about the platform that you want to use. So Amazon Linux, Amazon Linux 2, Ubuntu. We'll go with Amazon Linux 2. And then from a cost saving perspective, we can actually turn on auto hibernate. So after 30 minutes, it'll automatically shut down. So you won't get charged for that time that you're not using the server or doing anything. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and we'll have a new IAM role created for us. If we want to do any network advanced settings, we can. So for example, I'm going to change this to my mic VPC. And for my subnet, I'll go ahead and put it in the public subnet. That's perfectly fine. And then I'll click on next step here. So at this point, we can see the environment that's going to be created. Most importantly, we can see that that IAM role is going to be auto generated for us, which is great. And it's going to have all the settings that we need in that IAM role for accessing this environment. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click create environment. So as you can see, it's gonna take a little bit to run, but it shouldn't take too long to actually set up. Okay, and we are now officially inside of our new environment. So we can see that there's this little welcome screen. We can just click out of this and I can actually move this up a little bit and boom, we can actually see that we're in a terminal. So. It is a Linux box, so we can do things like LS or LS minus LA. It's, it's full bash, that's great. And then we can see here that we have this directory here and we have a readme. I open up the readme, you can see that it's you know AWS Cloud9, it comes with this default readme here. And then let's actually go ahead and start creating some code. So I click the plus button, I click on new file. And if I do control S, well, or command S if you're on Mac, we're just going to name this go version checker dot go. We'll put it right here in the go env directory. We'll save it. Okay. And boom. So we automatically have our new file for running go code. So let's type package main. We'll do some imports here. We'll say FMT, for example, let's just do a quick test. Truth be told, I never actually ran Go code from here. So this is the first time that I'm going to see if uh, it's actually going to work. And it, it looks like it's going to work automatically. It is seeing the IntelliSense. 
Let's say FMT. Yeah, see that? It is doing like the autocomplete for us. So we'll just test this out, we'll save it, we'll run. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. It does take a little while to run, I can see. Interesting. Okay, so it did run. So this is actually, this is really cool. This means that Go is automatically installed for us in this environment, which means it enables it and supports it right out of the box. So let's maybe like, uh, I don't know, let's get a little bit more granular here. We'll create, we'll have a new function that'll be called is version, just because out of curiosity, curious what version of Go this is running. So we'll create a new function here and we'll say func is version. Uh, what are we going to do? The return type, we're going to actually use OS and OS exec. So we're going to run a command. So this return type should be, we'll do a pointer to exec dot CMD. Right. So now let's actually create a new command here. So we'll say version equals exec command. And then within here, we'll type go version, all right? And then what we'll do is we'll get a, an STD out for this. We'll OS STD out. Really love the IntelliSense here and the auto completion, whatever you like to call it. I usually call it like IntelliSense. But it's really cool that it has that automatically for you right off the bat. So let's set up an error here. We'll say version run. If or one not equal nil, we'll do like a log print ln on or one here, right? And then we'll do a return, return version. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. What is preview? Preview running application configure preview URL show active servers. All right, cool. So we'll click run here. Let's see, imported and not used. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so that's really cool too. So it actually has goes like garbage collection right right off the bat because um, it's saying like, yeah, I imported FMT, but I didn't use it. So that's really cool. Garbage collection works successfully. Unidentified log. Where am I? Oh, forgot to import log. <laughs> Oopsies. All right, let's go ahead and run this and boom. So we can actually see our version. It's running Go 1.13.15. A few, few versions behind, but that's okay. It actually still runs our code and pretty good too. Uh, I think the first one was a, a little bit slow as we saw, um, but the second run was actually much better. So what I wanna do is, just out of curiosity, go to my AWS console here, go back to Cloud9, and see, we can actually see our environment running here in cloud nine. So if I open up IDE, for example, try using Vim mode, <laughs> nice. So we can see all of our code here and this has been saved. And now the one thing that I do wanna point out, which is really cool here, is that like, if you wanna write your code with somebody else, or you wanna be able to run it or preview it, or just have it in the same environment than everybody else, because you gotta think about it. Let's say you have like five developers and somebody and all five of you are running different versions of Go and you have different extensions installed in your IDE. It's not a consistent testing environment. And that's why I'm really starting to love these types of cloud-based environments that you're able to run your code on. And it, it, it's a decent IDE, I would say. I mean, it has that IntelliSense, it has that autocomplete. So I think it's definitely cool to check out. And with that, Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.